Hello friends. Today we will talk about treatment of congestive heart failure. So before I discuss the treatment of congestive heart failure, let's learn some basic concept about the physiology. Here is the heart. And the blood is coming to the right side of the heart from superior and inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava, superior vena cava. And whatever blood comes to the heart, right side of heart, this is known as preload. Okay. This is the first factor we determine cardiac function regarding heart failure. Second is cardiac contractility. Contractility. Okay. Third is the outflow from the aorta, which ultimately goes to arteriole. And arterioles are the main site of peripheral resistance. Arteriole. And they are the main site of peripheral resistance. So now, when we have to treat a case of congestive heart failure, either we have to reduce the preload or increase the cardiac contactility or we have to reduce the afterload. I can give you a better example, then you would understand better. Here is a hilly road. Hilly road, a road in the hilly area. And here is a is a cart, horse cart or bullock cart. Okay. Sorry, I'm not a very good artist. Here we have a bullock cart. One bull pushing, pulling this cart, and there's a lot of weight is there. And obviously, this is not able to pull the cart. So now, we want that this cart should go up. What we can do? First is, we remove, or we remove this, we remove this load or you reduce the load. This is one way. Second way is we add, there is only single, we add one more bull. Okay. Now there are two bulls, although luggage remains the same, but even two bulls can pull this very comfortably. Or we ask the, we change the route. We, we, ask, we ask the comfort of, Bullock cart to be taken in a flat road. So this is the second. Third is we are flattening the road. We are not asking to go via hilly road. Exactly same thing. Remember, in the three condition, the bullock cart will move much faster. So the first was to reduce the load. Same is to reduce the load is reduce preload. Second is adding the under bull. So you can, or we, we can do something to increase cardiac contractility. Third is we reform instead of going via hilly route, we go via flat route. So we remove the reduce the load. Exactly same thing. Got it? This is basic. So in nutshell, the basic principle of treatment of CHF is number one, reduce preload. Number two, increase cardiac contactivity. And third is the reduce peripheral resistance. Right. So now what are the drugs which lead to reduce preload? Drugs which reduce preload are number one, diuretic. Number two is nitrates. I hope you know 
As far as diuretic concern, they reduce the blood volume, preload is very clear. Nitrates, what they do? They are the potent. We know dilator. They dilate the vein, the whole body is pulled into peripheral tissues. The preload is reduced. Second drug which lead to increased cardiac contractility that you all of you know is detox. And the third category of the, of the drug which lead, uh, reduce peripheral resistance, typically what we use is ACEI. ACEI. It reduces peripheral resistance. Okay. This is in nutshell we talk about, but let's learn. These are the traditional drugs which all of you know, but now your understanding is better how we are going to treat a case of CHF. But now I tell you what are the newer drugs which have come for CHF. So the newer drugs for CHF are, this is a very, very important point, this you should know, newer drugs. I will be discussing some of the drugs which have been recently launched in the Indian market, which are not given in any of the pharma book, including Hersen latest edition also, that does not contain. The newer drugs are number one, Nesiteride. This is a BNP analog. I, all of you know that BNP is a natriuretic compound. Second is aplirinone. It is a potassium sparing diuretic just like spironolactone. Then we have Livosi Mendon. This increases cardiac contractility as well as reduces peripheral resistance. Then one drug, Arjuna Terminalis. It is a plant derivative drug. And this question came in 2015 or 14 May AIMS exam of AIMS, but surprisingly, this name is not given in Harrison. So this drug is beyond Harrison. But this question has already come. Now, we have a drug called coenzyme Q, something very interesting. This is not a drug for CHF, but if you use in case of CHF, the outcome becomes much better. That's why they very special drug. Now, some of the newer drugs are, we got a new drug, hydralazine. Hydralazine plus isosorbide combination. Hydralazine, we you know, it is the peripheral vasodilator, and this is a venodilator. So we are going to reduce preload and we are going to reduce afterload. Okay, preload and afterload. Then we have certain more new drugs. One is Omicamtiv. And other is Mecarbin. There are the two drugs. They are myosin activator. Myosin activator. That means they are positive inotropic drugs. They are the new drugs. Then we have got new drug. This has been recently launched in Indian market. And this name is not given in Harrison 19th edition. And this question will surely, surely come to you this year. 
in NEET or AIMS exam and those of my undergraduate students who are watching this video, if you write in your exam, examiner will give you 100% marks. And this question will surely come. So I'm leaking the paper to you, but I'm doing official. I'm doing it legally and nothing illegal about it. Now, what is that new drug is? The new drug is Secubitril is a new drug. This is in combination with Velsartan. This in combination with Velsartan. This uh, is a being launched in the Indian market as a congestive heart failure. Now, this Secubitril, this is the ARP, this you know. But this drug is a nepri lysine inhibitor. What is nepri lysine? It degrades BNP. Nepri lysine degrades BNP. BNP is a natri uretic compound that you know. So once we use this drug, it will inhibit uh, nepri lysine. So BNP will not be degraded, the more and more natural uresis will occur. This is again not given in Harrison 19th edition. Then one more new drug, again not given in Harrison 19th edition is Sim Pre T Let. It is a NEP inhibitor. NEP is a other enzyme which also can break down BNP. So uh, this drug is again not given in Harrison 19th edition. Okay. This is not launched yet, but it has been launched. Then in addition to that, we got Tol Web 10. Tol Web 10 is a, is a ADH inhibitor. Okay, so it is used specially in acute CHF with dilutional hyponatremia. Hyponatremia, where we want to remove water mainly. As you know, it's an ADH inhibitor. It is a ADH inhibitor. Okay. Then we have one more drug, Sildenafil. <clears throat> it's a Viagra. This is also have been approved for CHF, primarily for CHF associated with pulmonary arterial hypertension. Now, how it act? It generates nitric oxide and that potentiate cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP is a very potent relaxation of the muscle, especially the arterioles. So that is again, sildenafil is also being used as drug for CHF. Then a one more new drug has been approved, that is, is Teroxime. Okay, it inhibits sodium potassium ATPs. Okay, so friends, routine drugs are so let's have a quick revision. Routine drugs are nitrate, digox, nitrate, and diuretic, they reduce preload. Digoxin increases cardiac contractility. ACI reduces peripheral resistance. The newer drugs are Nesiteride, Eplirinone, Levosimendan, Arjuna Terminalis, Coenzyme Q, Hydrazine Isosurbide Dinatic Combination, Omicamptin and Mecarbil, Secubetril Valsatan Combination, Sem <coughs> Pretilat, Tolweptan, Sildenafil, and Esteroxime. Out of these, these three drugs are not given in any of the books, including Harrison also. But there's a high chance that you will be getting this drug 
in your exam, surely, because this drug is being discussed in all the conferences, all the uh, cardiology conference and other medicine conference, so this is a very important question. So friends, if you have any suggestion or comments, you can very well contact me. And the next topic, what I'll be discussing, will be, I got a, some people told me they want to learn neuroanatomy. So next time I'll be doing neuroanatomy, I'll be doing spinal cord, including brown sequoid and syringomyelia and other syndrome we will discuss. But if you have any suggestion, you can mail me at my personal email, contact Dr. Bhatia at gmail.com. It's very easy. Somebody asked you how to contact Dr. Bhatia. So contact Dr. Bhatia at gmail.com. I'll be waiting for your mails. Thank you very much for watching this video. The next lecture is on the coming Thursday uh, at again 4.15. Thank you very much for watching this video.